Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. Today, as promised, we move on from the Rain 12s over to the mixer part of the equation, the Rain 72. Now, I should make this clear because some people don't seem to be 100% certain about this. These two don't have to be used in combination. The 12 will work with any Serato DJ supported interface or mixer. That's absolutely fine. The 72 is a regular mixer with Serato DJ Pro support. But that's it, these two aren't tied in any way. You do have the extra USB ports on the rear of the 72 to use with the 12s, but that's as far as it goes. They're not locked to each other in any way. You can use this mixer with turntables, media players, other controllers, even standalone in internal mode if you like. You don't need to use this with anything in particular. With that in mind, let's get to it. At this point, there are plenty of great videos already online showing the features of the 72 from Rain themselves and from end users. So in the interest of brevity, I'm going to try to stick to just giving you my opinions and highlighting some aspects of the mixer, which I haven't seen covered too much. Fundamentally, there is just a ton of stuff to talk about with the 72. I've had to do multiple shoots with it as I keep forgetting to shoot different features, and I'm sure there are still things that have slipped my mind, but I'll do my best. First up though, let's explain what the 72 is about. It's a two channel battle mixer designed to work with Serato DJ Pro. It has two USB ports for switching between DJs or back to back sets. There are switchable line and phono inputs on each channel, two mic inputs, which can be switched to instrument line level. And the first one has an echo effect, which can be synced up to the decks. There is a session in and output on RCAs, booth on balance jacks and main output on XLRs. As well as the two USB ports to connect to your computers, the 72 also features a pair of USB inputs designed for the Rain 12s, but which can be used for pretty much anything else. Overall, I'm satisfied with the in and outs on the mixer, with my only disappointment being the lack of an analog send and return. Sure, there are many, many effects options available on the 72, but it's always nice to have the option to hook up external processing as well. Somebody commented on my review of the 12s that the new kit doesn't feel like Rain products of old, as I'd said it did. Well, I categorically stand by that. I have both a 62 and a 64, and the 72 feels just like those, both in terms of quality and ergonomics. They even feature the same kind of plastic pots, which I always used to moan about back in the day, but have now given up doing so, as everyone seems to use them. Everything simply feels solid and durable, with the tank-like feel of old rain still present and correct. Sound quality is excellent, both from the audio interfaces and the phono preamps. I've used the 72 to rip loads of vinyl with great results, and whether on a big system or on studio monitors, the sound has never disappointed me. It's clear and crisp, but also kind of fat. No weediness from the interfaces on here, which can sometimes be the case. Of course, scratching and the art of turntablism have been critical to the success of Rain in recent years, and so solid faders were absolutely essential. The last generation of their magnetic faders got a lot of love for their feel and performance, but there was no doubt that the rate of failure was higher than was ideal, with a lot of users breaking fader stems on a pretty regular basis. So the 72 brings the new Mag 3 contactless faders to all three slots. The crossfader and upfaders are identical. They offer a lot of adjustment. You have traditional knobs for contour on the front panel, cut in distance on the touchscreen, and tension on the fader itself. What's good about them? Well, the feel is superb and really just like older rain faders. Durability is promised to be much improved, and I've yet to see any reports of broken stems on any of the user forums after a few months on sale. And the fact you have the same quality on the up faders as the crossfader is a big benefit over the DJM S9 for those who are into cutting on the ups. What is not so good? I found myself missing the external tension adjustment of the S9. Whilst it's no great hardship to open up the mixer and to tweak it, it's not something you can do between DJs during a night, and everyone has their own taste. Personally, I like it a little bit tighter than stock, just to prevent any bounce while I'm mixing, and so any 72 that I come across in the club probably won't be set to my taste, and there's nothing really I can do about that. That's even more of a shame, because actually, when you're using the 72 with a laptop, it's very simple to load up all your preferred settings to the unit at a gig, effectively making the mixer your own. Everything else can be done with hardware controls, but you are stuck with the previously set fader tension, unless you want to crack the mixer open. 
Those many options are found in two places, in the software utility provided by Rain and buried in the touchscreen menus. There are tons of settings you can change, with even more added in the latest firmware. I dig the little touches like being able to remove effects from the list if you don't use them and to be able to set the cutoff frequency of the filters. When it comes to interacting with Serato DJ, the 72 goes way beyond any other mixer on the market. You can have the waveform display on the screen with both the overviews and the main waveforms and you can pinch to zoom on those right on the mixer. It's a little bit laggy with my ancient laptop, I suspect it would be less so with something more powerful but still perfectly usable. You have the ability to scroll through your library and load up tracks with a couple of layout styles to choose from. There's no way to search for tracks in your library, but realistically there is enough information on display and features to use that most DJs will not have to look at their laptop for 90% of a gig when using the 72, which I just love. My only real criticism of the screen is that it's not always immediately apparent which controls are touch enabled and which rely on hardware controls. You can pick it up quickly enough but it's just not always as obvious as I would like. The third main display page on the 72 is devoted to effects, and boy, there is a lot to talk about with those. Firstly, you have the hardware flex effects, with things like echo, hold echo, reverb, and flanger. These are post fader and sound great. It can be a little bit fiddly to dial in the perfect setting to your taste with some of them. It's certainly not as instant gratification as what you find on the DJM S9, but there is a ton of power there if you take time to mess with the options. Then there is also access to the effects in Serato DJ Pro, and not only can you stack those on each other, you can stack them with the hardware effects too. Absolutely crazy. Only one flaw there, the software effects are not post fader. Personally, I'm satisfied with the flex effects for my post fader echo kind of action, but I'm aware that a lot of users will want more. And so if Rain can find a way to make those post fader as well, that would be a big improvement for many. The FX activation paddles are dope, very solid and chunky. They have a great feel and can even be rotated 180 degrees if you prefer them around that way. I didn't like the fact that the LEDs weren't flashing when they were engaged, but Rain have fixed that in the latest firmware, so I'm totally happy with the paddles now. There's one more effects option on the screen, the touch effects. This lets you do instant effects with an XY pad purely by touch and yes, it's pretty cool. However, I've chosen the new option in firmware 1.2 to change the touch effects button over to being a tap tempo button, making touch effects now a shift function. That's because I play a lot of real vinyl 45 sets. And for me, the biggest issue on the whole mixer is the lack of auto BPM detection for effects when you're not using Serato DJ Pro. This means I spend too much of my gig tapping in BPM. I really want to see the addition of audio based BPM detection and the ability to dial in the BPM to a specific value via a knob as well. It's even more of a shame because there are loads of cool pad effects which are usable even with analog sources, but without accurate BPM, they're kind of wasted. Quick side note, there is a foot switch input on the front of the mixer, and this can be used with a three button foot switch like this one from Digitech. You can assign the buttons individually to the effects or to MIDI, and that works great and offers some serious creative possibilities. This video is getting rather long, I know, so let's run through the pads real quick. Proper Akai MPC style pads, RGB with all the modes you'd expect with Serato DJ, and a few more like pad effects, transport controls, and a fader effects mode which emulates scratch patterns. I'm not sure how interested the target audience will be in those, although I can imagine some interesting new combo effects and fader ideas coming out of that. My only issue with the pads was that there was just so much going on, it was kind of hard to track what was happening with different parameters in different modes. But Rain have added a fantastic new pad mode display to the screen in firmware 1.2 and that shows you everything that's going on and that can be tapped to make it stay on the screen. That's a feature I fell in love with right away. The 72 really does interact with Serato DJ to a degree we haven't seen on any hardware before. So there you go, my take on the Rain 72. You know, when I was preparing to do this review, I went back and I rewatched my video review of the DJM S9 from Pioneer. And in that video, I said that that was gonna be a very important mixer. And I was right, it really was. That was the mixer that came along. You know, Rain owned the Serato DVS kind of mixer space. They owned it, the 62, 
Prior to that, the 57, very important, very influential mixer. We had the Z2 over there for the tractor people. But yeah, if you were on Serato, it was the 62. That was the, the king of the scene. And then along came the S9 and it immediately made the 62 look dated and old. And I love the 62. I've got one over there in the lab right now. It's still a great mixer, but the S9 was like from a different generation. Now, along comes the 72. Is this from another generation again? Not far off. I don't think it's as massive a paradigm shift as it was with the S9, but that's really because some of the important stuff on here we've already seen before. So the pad section, really great responsive pads, and crucially, you can do different modes on each deck, which is a massive omission from the S9. You know, once you've had this option to go back to the S9, you're like, oh, why can't I do, you know, different things on each side? It's weird. The screen is fantastic. I love having screens on stuff. Um, the amount of power there, you know, it's an actual touch screen. You can, you know, pinch your waveforms and that kind of stuff. It's a proper touch screen. And the, yeah, the amount of information on display, the, you can scroll your library there. Really, the only time you need to look at your laptop now is when you want to search for a track. Beyond that, if you're just going through your crates, this thing has it all covered. And the waveforms, yeah, really great to have those in front of you as well. No glancing at your laptop over to the side. You're looking at your cues, everything else, it's all there on the mixer where your hands are. That I always love. When it comes to build, it feels like a rain. You know, some people seem to think it doesn't, but I've got a 62 here, I've got a 64 in my house. This thing just feels like a rain to me through and through. Sound quality wise, it's everything I would expect from a rain. It sounds fat, it sounds juicy, like chunky sound to it. Really great preamps in there as well for your vinyl. You know, I've done loads of vinyl rips with this and they all sound fantastic. So I'm super happy with the sound and the build. Price wise, yeah, it's a, you know, two, 300 bucks more than the S9, but it's a much newer mixer than that, and that's fine, I think. And it's actually cheaper now than the 62 was when it first came out. That was 2,000 bucks when that came out. So I think you're getting a lot for your money. I think a lot of the Rain DJs who'd sort of had their heads turned by the S9, they maybe had a little dalliance over in the world of Pioneer DJ, I think a lot of them will be coming back. And I think if you're just getting your first really high-end battle mixer, at the moment, this is the top of the tree. This is like the pinnacle of DJ Mixer technology that's available right now. You know, Pioneer DJ, I'm sure, will come back with something else, but that's what we always like. Competition is what we like. It pushes everyone to make better stuff. And ultimately, yeah, this thing is way better than the 62 for less money than the 62 used to cost. Can't really argue with that. Thank you for watching today. Do make sure you hit that bell icon down below to become part of our notification squad and get notified anytime there's a new video from myself or the rest of the DJ City team. I'll see you soon.